my bobbers and welcome to this week's YouTube vlog from Barton All Burner Services and I hope we're all okay. As always, thanks for everyone that subscribed last week. We had loads of people subscribe and we love it and please keep doing that because it's amazing. And obviously for the comments we have, which were also brilliant as well. So thank you as always for that. So moving quickly on to this week's vlog, well, we nearly didn't have a vlog this week because essentially I've been doing quite a big installation. The boys have been doing tanks and bits and bobs and you've sort of seen some of that before. So we thought, well, we won't do this one this week because there hasn't been much breakdown work this week. However, yesterday was a bit of an odd day. We ended up with six or seven breakdowns, which is a bit unusual because it's the summertime. And very occasionally we had to pull burners away from jobs as there's an issue. But really randomly, we had to take three away yesterday. God knows why. So one of them was a Certikin boiler with an R40 burner on it. And basically it's totally seized, it's totally corroded. And that's something that Ryan is sorting out. And I ended up with two, which again, come from Ryan, but I've ended up doing them. One was a Grant wall mounted boiler with the Bentone burner on it. And it's basically waterlogged because an auto air vent had leaked. So that's gonna be a complete strip down and a rebuild. I'll show you that another week. I have recorded it, but it will be a vlog another week. And the final one was a Beta Sorrento. Now that was a burner that has failed in quite an epic way, which is quite funny. And obviously, yeah, we we didn't show you the, or I'm gonna show you the burner stripped down and rebuild and what I have to do to it. We haven't showed any of the taking it out of the boilers and stuff like that, because you have seen me service the Sorrento before. So you know all about that. So it's a sterling burner I'm going to be doing with you and essentially the blast tubes fell to pieces, the ends fell out of it. On the Beta Sorrento it's very slightly shorter on the sterling burner, it's a sterling 40 but it's a slightly shorter blast tube on it. So yeah we can get one but there's quite a delay on them and I haven't got a second hand one, they're all a little bit too long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it home and then it'll probably be tomorrow morning now because unfortunately I'm out this evening. I'm going to weld it up. I'm going to try and weld it up, see if I can repair it temporarily for them and get them going again. Because essentially the house it's in, they have young children, they haven't got an immersion heater, so they need the hot water. So that's what I'm doing. I'm not going to go on anymore like I normally do. Let's get on with this week's vlog. It's just after six and it's the next morning. Well, it's about half past six. And basically here's the burn I've got to sort out. As I said, I couldn't do it last night. So this is your sterling burner. It's a really, really, really good burner. It's on so many products and it's very reliable. First thing I notice is that that hasn't been put in properly at some point, which obviously isn't ideal. But the biggest reason this isn't working is because the end of the blast tubes fell out. And as I explained in the van, you can get them, but there's quite a delay on them. And we haven't got any second-hand ones at the moment. It's, it's out of a beta Sorrento, so it's quite a short one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and clean this face up here. And then I'm gonna clean this face up around here. I'm gonna line that up in there and then I'm gonna spot weld it and try and repair it temporarily. And then I'm gonna do a full strip down of the burner. And obviously we can, I can show you what's inside it, et cetera, et cetera. And they're a very unique burner because basically you need very few tools to take them apart as well. So basically you have one main screw at the back here, which is what I'm doing, or I'm doing even. Like so, it's just an Allen key. I'm just gonna slide that out. And then you spin it over and essentially you get hold of this bit and give it a wiggle and it comes off. And that is all your guts underneath there, look. So there obviously is your electrodes, there's your nozzle, there's your fan you can get to, there's your drive coupling down there you can get to, obviously your pump you can get to, etc, etc. But I will be taking it totally to pieces. So what I'm gonna do now, which I'm not gonna be able to show you, is I'm gonna clean the end of this up and I'm gonna weld it. Obviously I can't show you that part, lots of sparks, and when you weld it's very bright and you can't do that on a camera. So I'm just gonna repair this and show you when I've done it and then I'll be back to you. So just going back a step, I'm, I'm lucky I've got one of these. It comes off a compressor, as you can see. Yeah, I've cleaned the blast tube up, much better. It has got a little bit of corrosion in it, but it hasn't gone through this good. And most importantly, this top edge, I've got that nice and clean. I've then cleaned the other part up and inspected it. Really important that you don't do anything with these spins, bend them, anything like that, because they are designed to do something. And then I'm basically gonna place that in the top so it sits nice and square where it was before, which is like that. I'm now gonna give it some spot welds and then that should be on position. And the idea is when it's done, there should be no air gap between there and there all the way around as it causes an inaccurate flame. 
So yeah, that's where I'm at. And I'll be back when I've had a little go at welding. I've welded it. As you can see, it's welded all. I've had to weld most of the way around because unfortunately it was very corroded. So I haven't done continuous weld because that was quite hard to do because I'd have blown it to bits. What I'm going to do is now get a grinder. I'm going to clean all that up and that will make it smoother. And that will, should be sufficient enough for the job. For anyone who is interested in welding, I've got a little CIP welder. So that TIG rigs and arcs. So that's what I normally use. And then sometimes I also use oxypropane as well. But in this case, I thought the oxypropane would be a little bit too hot. So a little bit of miggle there. Get the grinder out, have a go at that, see where I come to, and I'll be back. Sorry about noise in the back, man, it's just a compressor. So, it's done. Nice and smooth all the way around. As you can see, like so. It's nice and flat across the top, which is good. It needs to be, it's smooth inside, that's really important. Slightly knobbly on the top, there's not a lot I can do about that. That's really rotten, that was, for some reason. Um, but I've managed to sort that out. So, that is a solid there's anything now and also I've got to say in the back of it you can see you've got the bit where the nozzle goes I did manage to line that up as you can see so that's absolutely perfect as well so that's the blast tube done bit hot steel but I'm happy with that okay that'll get them out of trouble I'm now going to take the burners pieces first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to undo the electrodes which is just here like so there we go I'm just going to drop them off I'm going to clean them and I'm going to clean this part here and then I'm going to renew the nozzle and I'll be back. The electrodes have come up a dream, they don't look very old and I've cleaned that nozzle holder there, I haven't changed the nozzle yet. The reason I clean that is because then you can inspect for cracks around it which is there's none because I've just looked. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it over here, I'm just going to nick that plug off there, I'm going to undo one down there and one down there which I just need to remove the transformer first. So we flick it out with a screwdriver like so. This clip and we lift the transformer out the way. That allows us just to get to that screw there. So I'm going to undo them too with the motor out and I'll be back. Motor's out. Now I'm going to just check the drive coupling. You can see there it's looking a bit tired. There's a flat at the bottom that looks okay. Just check the drive coupling. Oh God, that's rock hard. That's no good. So that would make the burn noisy and eventually crack and fail. So that's going to go. So that's actually the drive coupling as well. We're going to spin the motor. Quite as a mouse. So I'm now going to get my brush. I'm going to go in all them fins there to make sure it's clean. Once I've done that, I'm going to undo that 13 mil there. Flick it over. Change that capacitor. Once I've checked it, which I'll show you again in a minute, which I've shown you before, but I like to keep showing people. Then I'm going to clean inside here. And then I'll be back. So the burn motor is clean as you can see there. It's all done, all clean inside here. I'm just going to stick it between my legs. And then as you can see, I've got a multimeter out and it's on microfarads. And I'm going to try and do this one handed. I'm going to put my two leads on here. One. And he says two. It should be three UF this one and it's 3.05. Doesn't look that old to be honest, because as you can see, yeah, it was hanging out, so I put it in properly. So that one's absolutely fine. So I'm going to reconnect that together now and then I'm going to get a new drive coupling. I'm going to pop that motor in there once I've checked the pump. Now I'm not going to take the pump out. I'm going to look down there. I'm going to pull that coupling off. I'm going to check for leaks and I'm going to turn that about 52 times. The direction of the pump. So if you look here, it's an L3 pump. So an L3 pump means it turns left. So as you look at it from this side, it goes that way. So I'm gonna turn that 52 times and check it for tight spots and stuff like that. I'm gonna do all that and I'll be back. Now I've just checked the transformer. So you just check for bubbles. There's no bubbles in there at all, as you can see. That's just a bit of dirt, which I'll wipe in a minute. And all the leads are lovely and flexible. So I'll put that back in in a minute. I'll put a new nozzle in. I've had to jump forward a little bit. Because to be honest, it's like half past seven now quarter to eight and I have got a bit of job at eight o'clock but I was trying to get this done so Ryan can go and finish the job today. Electrodes are back on. You have to finish the top of the electrode level with the top of the nozzle on these. Not lower because you'll get a groove across the top of the nozzle and it ruin it and if it's too high it hits this part of the blast tube and doesn't work. That's all done. It's all back together. I'm going to pop this in. I'm going to pop the blast tube into there. I'm then going to put that back on. Give it a clean. And I'll be back. So I've put it back together, so to speak. Just gonna let you know, the main bolt that goes through, really important, can you see that? Put a bit of copper grease on it. Has to have copper grease on it. The reason being is, is because you're basically putting a stainless steel bolt into a bit of aluminium, a bit of casting. And if you don't put that on, it will seize and then it will snap and you'll never get it to bits again. And no, you don't take the blast tube off and go in that way. The correct way to do these is to undo this and then obviously the whole burner separates as I've shown you. 
And on this one, it's got the DKO 970 control box. Don't have to use it on this one. Someone's put this on. Um, an 830 will be absolutely fine because it's just a single stage lift coil. So the final thing we're going to do is check this. It's a photo cell. It needs a wipe, which I'm wiping it. It's a short one in this. Sometimes they're long, but on this case, it's a short one. And that's it. So I'm just going to do that up and I'm going to give the whole thing a good wipe over with the good old friend of mine, WD-40. That's it. All done. All nice and shiny. All done. All repaired and that's nice and central in there so i'll take it apart from i need to wipe in here there we go got to be nice and clean hasn't it that's that one done in case you're wondering a little dribble of all there in case you're wondering why the pump is at a funny angle on these the burner's upside down so that then faces uphill and faces you that's the reason for it so this is done i'm happy with that and as i always say back to the van and that's it that is another vlog Ching! done from Barton all burner services and i hope you enjoyed it so a little bit shorter than normal essentially all i wanted you all to, all to show you all is basically that yes when you're in trouble you can repair things if you really have to so that customer will be really happy now yeah i'm happy i've got that done i'd like to have got it done last night because i do feel like i'm running a bit behind now because my first job is 8 30 this morning and it's quarter past eight please feel free to comment as always and i'll see subscriptions we love people that subscribe because it makes us happy but most importantly this boy here simba say hello he's free today bless him so yes happy birthday simba so have a great weekend everybody and as always until next time stay safe